All right, good afternoon, good morning everybody, wherever you are in the world. My name is John and I'd like to welcome you to another Marketing Experiments web clinic. And uh, today we're gonna talk about optimizing subscription paths, how a radical web page redesign produced 173% lift in customer response. And uh, if you're new to the uh, clinic that we have or whatnot, I'd, I'd like to let you know that this is a very interactive kind of session we certainly don't like to just hear ourselves talk or not actually see you interacting. We want to see your questions, your comments, even anything funny that you have to say. In fact, um, I'd like to give a shout out to Matt Biscup on Twitter from uh, the last clinic. He says, me thinks the term senior in job titles has jumped the shark with a picture of me, Taylor, and Austin. Uh, you are indeed correct. So uh, <laughs> just want to thank you for that. Guys, listen, we're on Twitter. Hashtag web clinic. We're looking at your tweets. Seriously, I just read one. Um, we're looking for your comments. We're looking for your questions. We also have the functionality in GoToWebinar. I invite you to just be a part of the conversation, be a part of this session, and just really help us give the most value to you by letting us know how we're doing, asking your questions. Today, uh, you're in luck, Matt, because we're joined by Taylor Kennedy, Senior Manager here of Training. So he's actually recently taking over a lot of our training. So if there are any mm -hmm. problems with today's clinic, it's his fault. I just want to let you know that. I don't have to worry about that anymore. Sorry, Taylor. Thanks a lot, John. Appreciate it <laughs> yeah, a ton. Really, but Taylor's been here for a number of years. I'm really, uh, really glad to have Taylor here. Um, I have been here for about seven and a half years. I've worked uh, with Mech Labs for some time, have a lot of privilege to run a lot of experiments along with Taylor, mm -hmm. and we're happy to share with you some research today. So uh, I'd like to get started first. I want to ask you guys, I just want to make sure you actually uh, are using the GoToWebinar. How many of you have been to a web, web clinic before? I'm watching the Q&A right now. Just say yes. Um, I want to see, have you been to web clinic before? Have you been to one of our web clinics? That All is. right, so we've got a lot of return attendees, great. Like a thousand of them, says Dave. Dave, I, I know who you are. I'll have to see if I can throw something your way. But um, thank you guys. Um, so excellent. So we've got a lot of people that have been here at the clinic before, a lot of yeses. And um, so let's go ahead and get started. We always start with an experiment. I want to see where you guys are at so we can then begin to really try and add some value to your day, give you something you can use. So let's start with an experiment. We have a Experiment TP1481, this is a newspaper who's wanting to increase its online subscriptions. No surprise, right? The goal here is to increase click-through. And our research question is, which landing page will generate the highest click-through rate? Uh, if you're familiar with these sessions, you know the drill. We're going to look at the original or the control in this experiment. For those of you that may not be familiar with us or you're, maybe you're new to experimentation, the control is a page that typically exists already in the site and that is being tested against to determine if a hypothesis is or correct or is not correct. So this is kind of the basis of comparison. And as you can see here, we've got the top uh, with access to the new newspaper.com for just 99 cents with the image and at the bottom, you've got some additional supporting copy and a video. And here's the treatment. <coughs> If you're, again, if you're new to experimentation, this is what we're using to try and understand a particular idea or a particular thought we have about the customers, okay? And in this case, you can see a number of changes have been made. Everything from the headline to the main image to even the supporting content. This is what we would call a radical redesign, okay? So I'm gonna give you a chance just to quickly look at the content. Now let's look at them side by side. Audience, I always give you a chance to vote. I'd like to hear your votes now. Are you in favor of control one or treatment two? Which one do you think will win? Which one do you think will win? Let me see it. Okay, I'm seeing a lot of twos. We have a couple people that are brave and are going for the control. I'm seeing a couple more ones, but a lot of treatments. I think, okay. they got, I think they've got a lot of this figured out, John. Well, well let's find control's out. Control's a bad word, right? <laughs> yeah, well, you know, that's the funny thing. It's, we always think control is a bad word, right? Well, let's, uh, let's actually see which one was the winner. Here are the results. Well, treatments, you have it again. 173% relative increase in clicks. Now, look at the KPI, the key performance indicator. It's clicks. 
Okay, let's, let's, okay, let's go ahead and take a look at the two pages again, side by side. Okay, if you guys can see it on the screen, we've got the control and the treatment. Now, I always ask you guys this question, why do you think the treatment was better? But actually, I wanna ask you a different question. I want you to fight for the control. I want you to give me 10 good reasons why the control would even be worth testing at all. Why not just implement the treatment and not even run a test? What is it about the control that, that you think would actually give it a chance? So I want you to take a look. Let me hear from you guys. This is a little harder for you uh, veterans. Okay, we've got zip code. Gives price right up front. Okay, more visible sign up button. Okay, we've got bullet points do sell. Video. Okay, video. The control provides a list clear eye path, okay, easier to look at on mobile devices. Okay, good. Excellent. Bullets. All right. It tells me right away what my cost mm -hmm. will be. Very good. Uh, so we've got a lot uh, on price, okay. More written information, red banner. White space is nice, although I don't think it's an advantage here, says Amy. All right. How do you guys feel about this exercise? Do you guys find yourselves doing this often? I find myself doing it often at home when I want a particular option to be the best option, right? Uh, as they say, I think um, Leonard Moldenau, he has a really interesting book, it's called Subliminal. And he points out that, you know, we're great scientists as human beings, you know, we come up with a hypothesis and we test to find the actual conclusion. But the truth is, is that we're brilliant lawyers, more brilliant than we are scientists, and we will find a point and we will fight for it, okay? And when I take a look at the control, I could fight for it for a number of reasons. Mm -hmm. The top one is, is that it looks a lot like a landing page template I prescribed about a year or two ago, mm -hmm. right? Um, I take a look, I mean, it's got the headline, it's got bullet points, it's got a call to action supporting image and then supporting copy under it. So there's a lot of things that it's doing right. But is that the best way to solve a problem? I mean, how often do we go into something and we, say, what did I do before? What actually worked before? What actually helped me get to where I wanted to go before? We as humans do that, I think, a mm -hmm. lot, actually. And I call that kind of a rule-based approach, right? You're gonna see an image here. You may have seen it before if you've been in the clinic. But if you haven't, I, I want to specify something really quick. Let's, let's think about this. There are generally two based kind of approaches that you can take to something, right? There's kind of a rule-based approach where after a while, you begin to see patterns in your life and you're like, oh, well, when this happens, I should do this. When this happens, I should do this. When this happens, I should do this. I took a rule-based approach in dating and well, I didn't get very many dates after the first one. It just didn't work, right? Uh, for some odd reason or not. Um, but then there's a different kind of approach, right? Uh, I would call it a science-based optimization approach. Now, let's think about a practical example. What today uses a rule-based approach that totally gets on your nerves? Siri. I don't know about you guys, but those, Siri uses a rule-based approach. When they say this, do this. When they do this, do this. It's very much computer-like. And what happens is, is you spend more time fighting with Siri than actually driving your car. There's a study apparently that proved that in the last uh, month or two. It was really interesting, USA Today, check it out. But um, it's the same kind of phenomenon. We work with something and it uses a rule-based system and oftentimes it doesn't give us the best result. Well, sometimes it does. Now, with the science-based kind of optimization approach, it's slightly different. Do we, per, do we kind of come up with a methodology? Yes. Could you consider that kind of rules? If you use it a certain way, yes. But what is it that's fundamentally different? It's the meta theory, and that's what I want to point out to you really quick. It's the meta theory, it's the foundation. Think of it kind of as your, your value system. Think of it as something that guides you, that you never truly know where it's going to direct you until you actually get into the situation to figure it out, right? And in fact, for all of those great television um, shows that you love to watch, where you're watching a character being put in simultaneous uh, scenario after scenario after scenario, you're watching them use their value system to make choices, and sometimes their choices don't look exactly the same, but maybe the result is. is what is it that they're doing differently? And how is it that I can take this kind of approach and use it to improve 
what I'm doing to get more of, I guess, a consistent positive result. Because at the end of the day, I don't care about the rules, I care about the results. The rules are just a means to an end. So that last page, I would tell you, was put together not based off of a rule-based system, but off of a meta-theory-based system. And today we want to share with you a pattern, or a set of patterns that have come from this system. And we call it the convergence sequence. I don't want you to look at this as rules. I want you to look at this as a strategic guide. This, I believe, is the key to this particular treatment. There are a number of factors that affect conversion, but after 20 years of research, after 20,000 plus paths, okay, after a billion plus emails, we begin to notice patterns. And while all patterns aren't going to, uh, all such scenarios aren't going to prescribe for you everything, the patterns themselves do kind of give us a sense of what's really going on. And that's that people don't buy from websites, people buy from people. And the great thing about this strategic guide is that its sole purpose is to help you, I guess, think like a person when you're doing your marketing. To take off the marketing cap and put on the human cap. It's the, I'm not gonna ask a girl out until I've gotten to know her first. That kind of thing. And in the formula, you can't solve it mathematically. But what it does say is it says that conversion is the, the, at least the probability of the conversion, is the effect of a motivation of a user, the clarity in which uh, the value proposition is expressed, its incentive to take action, friction elements, and anxiety elements in the process. So those are all functions. Those are all kind of sensitive points or key levers in the process. And so today, what we want to do is we want to take one of those elements, and we want to help you see those kind of elements on a particular page, or see where those interactions occur on a particular page. So what we're going to do is this. Today we want to show you how to get to that page that did so well, from the rules, okay, how to beat your better judgment, basically, using the strategic guide in a, one of the particular elements, and that's friction. And that's what I'd like to spend the rest of the time with you. And then Taylor and I are gonna go into live optimization. We're gonna actually look at your pages, and we're going to give you a chance to uh, see some changes done on your own work. So with that? Yeah, so I think, John, one of the great things about friction to point out, too, is the fact that friction is one of those areas where, I'm sure the audience has heard of it before, but it's one of those right. areas where you can see those gains. Um, you right. can make changes to the page, and see immediate changes, whether it's in click-through, whether it's in conversion, you're gonna see those improvements just by following some of the, the simple examples that we've shown here, and then also by taking that, and like John said, using that meta theory to apply it to your own pages. That's very good, and he's exactly right. So uh, stay tuned for the rest of the session. I think you'll find value. So let's define friction. For those of you that aren't familiar with the term as we have it here at the lab, there are really two terms, the physics term, force that resists the relative motion or tendency to such motion of two bodies in contact. That's a mouthful. But um, we're talking about things rubbing up against each other, the whole reason why your car actually stops when you hit the brakes. But in marketing, it's different. We define it as a psychological resistance. Uh, for example, do you know anybody uh, that started a, I guess, a workout routine or uh, maybe a, an eating routine or some kind of a diet this year, anybody? So do any of you know anybody that actually finished one this year or actually made it past the first month? Why? Why is it? What is it? Why did, so they can do it. They can actually make a difference. They have the equipment. They buy, that's the best part, right? They buy all of the stuff, right? They're like, they, they even buy like the, like the Under Armour shirts and everything mm -hmm. and then they don't actually use it. It's the difference between can do and will do. Absolutely. Right? I think that's what we're dealing with with friction. We're dealing with a kind of a, I can do it, but do I want to do it? What is it that's actually getting in the way? What is this resistance? And this resistance, it occurs in humans in a couple of different forms on a kind of a length, right, and a difficulty kind of area. And it's very much like in a conversation with somebody that you totally don't want to talk to, right? I mean, they drag on the conversation where it's too long. Or they continue to steal it back from you. You want to talk about something you're interested in, and they're like, no, no, they just take it mm -hmm. right back. 
right? So if, it's, if Taylor was talking, I would just totally interrupt him and be like, no, 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 Taylor, let's talk about this. Mm -hmm. That's difficulty, right? The same thing happens on our web pages. The same thing happens in our marketing interactions. It just happens in the mind. But it produces the same feeling, and that's of annoyance. I can't stand this guy. Why won't he stop talking? Yeah, and I think John brings a great point here. So I like to take things and put them in a layman's terms because of all the work I've done on the research and the services side on our partners directly. So annoyance, confusion, those are all synonyms I attribute to friction. That's, that's good. So with that, what, are the kind, what do we need to do about this? What is it that, that we need to understand? Well, let's talk a little bit about each of the elements, but there's a key word that I want you to know that's not in your slides. This is, in, this is the part, this is the key word that's going to take you from rule to meta theory, okay? I don't want you to think, oh, well, it can't be too long and it can't be too difficult. No. I want you to think unnecessary link and unnecessary difficulty because sometimes length is necessary. Absolutely, and I think that's the, the biggest point that you made here is that, and that we make in all these web clinics is that you have to test it because the meta theory dictates that your audience is going to be different than another audience and that Absolutely. it's up to you to apply these principles the right way for your customer set. So you've got to understand what's unnecessary, mm -hmm. right? You've got to figure out what's unnecessary, what is frankly getting in the way for that particular scenario and situation. So let's talk about length a little bit. Now let's take a look at the original or the control. There are a lot of things that may work really well. We talked about mobile devices, okay? We talked about, okay, video can help, right? But what about for this particular group at this particular time? Uh, I th I, Taylor, you might know more about this particular case study or this series, but they're at a point where they're almost ready to buy. Is that kind of correct? Or do you, what do you know? Do you know uh, any additional information about this case study, about the motivation of the users? Yeah, absolutely. So what we do know a little bit is that this is the specific offer page. So people reach this page after they've already been qualified to a certain degree, right. showing or expressing at least some motivation. So if they're already saying that they kind of, they're already showing some interest, why start the conversation over, right? And when I say start it over, not just in what you say, but in how you say it right? Why start the conversation over? So that's, I think, the hypothesis that the, that the uh, researchers here, and there are a number of different changes they made as well, but let's take a look at the difference. And the treatment, in terms of a length, there's something different that happens with the product tour in that the perceived amount of length has been reduced. Now, how has it been reduced? Well, there is one thing that I could tell you right away. People process images 60,000 times faster than they do text. Wow. 60,000 times faster. That's why if you create a press release and it has an image in it, you're more likely to get views. It's because mm -hmm. people process it. They, they look at the image and they begin to understand, okay, this is what it's about. This is what I'm learning about. And oftentimes, just the right image can get them engaged. So the, the first thing that I see right away without reading anything is... I'm, I'm actually beginning to process it. I'm already beginning and building a momentum. Whereas with the last one, let's go back. Look, oh man, do I have to read all of that? Now, if my motivation's high enough, no problem, mm -hmm. okay? But if you're actually trying to add value here, you're trying to get me to that next step, you're using this as a way to kind of light a fire under me, mm -hmm. then do it in such a way that it, well, it gets me engaged fast. Because now that you've built a momentum, they might actually go and click or they might actually read that. So this is a really interesting, this is a really interesting kind of difference, but it's, it's subtle. You might miss it, but that's kind of the main difference here. Yeah, and I think what John touched on, uh, the big keyword here is perceived uh, length here. So once again, you arrive at the page and you see this huge brick of copy. Who wants to read all of that? Versus in this experience, you're seeing the image, you're seeing prioritize content, and that's really important too. Visitors are able to see probably what's most important on the page uh, by the priority in which it's being displayed, and they're also able to express areas of interest that they have and that they want to learn about by the links on the left nav. So what this is essentially doing is it's cutting the conversation to the point, mm -hmm. to the one thing that they may appreciate. And what would happen if, you know what, the next test that they could do here? They could actually change the default tab mm -hmm. on the left. 
that actually might make a difference. Yeah, especially if they've got click tracking on board and they see, okay, people want to know more about responsive design and they want to know about offline reading or content, shuffle that in your favor. Um, and that's all the metrics you can use to your benefit, right? Yeah, excellent. So that's just one thing I want to show you. Now let's take a look at a couple of other examples. From this, we have a two-step process to this. They actually combined this into one step. Interesting. And the result was a significant difference. In this case, that extra click added some perceived length and it was just too much for some people. They just, they, it, something happened, right? But that's not the only example. We've seen a lot of these, especially with the field length, right? From this to this. I know this case study, this is one that I ran. These were customers that only had 10 minutes to check out on a particular price. Half the amount of forms to fill out. Significant difference. Yeah, urgency is important here. Right. That was a very large perceived length because they were in a rush. Now, did you know that by looking at it? No, but that's why we're here telling you. Again, it's not necessarily about a rule. It's not about less fields. Again, it's about the conversation that you're having with the person and seeing where they're coming from, where they're starting. That's the M in the equation. Let's take a look at another one, field layout. Even field layout, something as, as simple as this, one of the big differences that I see here is that just there's not very many boxes. There's not a lot of fences to jump over. And if you're like me and my wife today, she's like, listen, I got to buy these shoes because we're going on this trip next week and I just don't want to spend the money. Okay, I promise you that those little boxes will, I don't know, there's something, I'm going to start using that as an excuse. It seems ridiculous, but we all do it. We're all great at that. So eliminate all of the reasons for them to stop or to slow them down. One final example, 24% on that one. This is interesting, they just cut a lot of the text. What was the result? I don't know if you guys can see it on your screen, but we got a 41% difference. Let me back click one. Now take a look at that. I examined these in detail, and they literally just cut text. They cut text out. I think the final treatment in this series was literally just, I think that guy and the lab, and I think a headline, an intro, and then a button. Mm -hmm. I think that was the final one in the series. So in this case, people just wanted to get to it. They didn't care. They were already sold. They didn't need much more. It was extra. It was perceived length. Yeah, and I think, John, the other thing to mention here is, is how do you know which content on your page is actually doing the selling? You can test it by cutting it, by changing it, by right. prioritizing it, and that's one of the biggest things to remember. Sometimes you might not need an extremely long form page to get the sale done. Right. Um, that's going to change and vary on a case-to-case -case basis. That's exactly. So this is, again, it's not about a rule here. I want you to think about the customer, think about the person, and think about, okay, what's unnecessary? What's unnecessary? All right. Now let's talk a little bit about difficulty. Difficulty is actually more or less, it's, the difference between length and difficulty is this. It's like an immobile device. One of the things that I've noticed in the meta-analysis of mobile device tests that I've seen, especially uh, with pages and emails and things, is that people have a great tolerance for length, but they have no tolerance for difficulty. Yep. What do I mean by difficulty? Pinching, moving, swiping sideways, going out, right? In order to engage in the content, they've got to do two or three multiple actions. And I don't know, if you got that new iPhone 6 Plus, you're going to drop the phone before you finish the page. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's so big. Right? So, but with length, I can just flick my thumb and it goes up. So that's, the length is necessary, but the difficulty is totally unnecessary for mobile. That's what I'm finding. And it's the same thing with a lot of pages. You've just got to figure out where it's at. Let's take a look at the page that had the great difference and see where we can find some reduced difficulty. Now, let's take a look at the original for the sake of comparison. There's one key thing that I think is the big divider here for this treatment and the control. What do you guys think it is? I see one person, looks like Maynard answered. Let me see, what do you guys think is the big issue here of difficulty? All right, seeing some good answers coming in. This was an interactive clinic, guys. Let us let me see a couple more. There we okay on oh, the button on the text. Okay, zip code, several options, understanding the difference. The zip code thing. Great answer, Mark. Uh, the text on the button, two call to actions. Okay. 
All right. Listen, guys. Okay, great. Carolyn's on board. Oh, yeah, nice. Mm -hmm. So there's a, two decisions on this page, actually three. The first decision is this. Which one do I want? Do I want to pay $3.99 per week when I'm done or $3.50 per week when I'm done? So now I have to imagine actually going through the trial and now I've got to decide if I want to pay 50 cents more for one day more per week. But I have to read all that text, I have to do the comparison, I have to figure it out. So I can't actually move forward until I make that decision. Mm -hmm. Why not just get me started? Exactly, and that's something that you could figure out lower in the funnel too if need be, you know, subscription right. options later on after the landing page. So if I'm interested, why are you gonna stop me now and make, have me make a decision when you can just get me started and then afterwards you can help me decide. You can give me the lowest one and then give me a chance to upsell. Again, there are different methods, but here there are at least two or three decisions here. You've got to make that decision. Then you've got to make the decision if you want to look up the zip code. I'm not sure if that's required that you hit that. And then you've got to hit sign up, right? So, and, and I love that comment, Scott, about the it looks illogical. It looks like they're trying to do a decoy effect here even, right? With the, okay, well, if I put something that looks like I'm getting a lot, I don't know if you guys are familiar with the decoy effect. You can look it up on your own time. But the decoy effect is simply a psychological trick to help somebody value something more than the other. Mm -hmm. But in this case, it's actually hurting the click-through rate because it's still forcing them to make a decision. This is something that you might want to use later when they actually have to make a decision, that particular one. Something to keep in mind. So as you can see with the treatment, they don't do that. You really, you really, you have one less decision at least. Now you can view demo for, you know, if you're not sure, but it's very de-emphasized. In fact, I don't even, when I glance at the page, I don't even, I think it's just an error from the developer, right? <laughs> okay, what I see is get full access. That's what I see. I see access, now there's a lot of additional things that have happened here. Let me, great, better headline, better subheadline, better images to kind of go with that. There are a lot of good things here, but the one thing that this treatment does is that it gets rid of a decision that's unnecessary, again, unnecessary for this stage of the game. Even the iPath is just straight up easier to process. But again, just take a look at that decision and say, are there any unnecessary decisions that I'm having them make? When do I absolutely have to have them make that decision? At what time? Another example of this, um, here's a great iPath example of difficulty where I've got to go down and then back up again. All the team did was they simply made it linear. They did a couple other things here, but ultimately, they're not having to bounce around. The result is 36% more. I think John brings up a great point here. It's, especially for mobile, making things lengthy and vertical, people do have a tolerance for that. Um, the only other thing, too, to keep in mind is, you know, if you have availability for a heat mapping tool, make sure you're actually using it and checking it to understand how people are visually navigating your site and where they're clicking, just to make sure that you're doing your due diligence and designing the pages that um, fit your audience. Very good, right, so again, it's not about the rules. We're not saying it's make it less difficult. We're saying figure out the right amount of difficulty for the customer, for the person. Think like you're talking to a person. What's the right amount? What's unnecessary? Here's another version. I, I, I love this one. I, I remember this case study. I wanted more people to click on those school links. And so what did I do? Well, I just moved it. <laughs> I just moved it up, Boop. okay, now it's a lot easier to access. And we've got a better headline there too to help guide them. So it wasn't the only change, but just that significant change made a significant difference in the click rate. Okay, we're drawing, we're, getting, we're leading them and we're getting rid of the, the blocks in the way. Another great example, uh, here are all your different categories. This is an Italian. We should run a contest to see how fast somebody could translate this. Um, I have a no. few ideas. Didn't work. Okay. Well, um, this is this is a great treatment, and I did. I think we did a meta analysis on category pages. We have a past clinic on it. You could watch it, but the key for category pages is really eliminating that unnecessary difficulty. And the treatment does a great job of this by letting them, you know, make three simple decisions instead of twelve. Right? You don't have to go through three. You just have to choose category. So you're actually doing less, and in the end, you're getting to where you want to go. We call it configurator but it's just one of the many tools that you have. And I encourage you to see if it will work for your customers. Okay, 20% more. And then finally, again, one cla another classic example 
Um, a lot of like, e-commerce companies are trying to figure out the best way to do this, but for this particular company, selling computer parts where specs really matter and everything, things get crowded really quick. So what did they do? Well, they made it easier for you to sort through that. Not only to read kind of the description, the price, and to kind of make the difference, but also to filter everything on the left. And those things are important. I used to, I guess, fiddle around with building computers, mm -hmm. and finding the right part was so hard. So I could see just on the right how much less difficulty there is in finding that exact thing that you need so you can get that computer built or get it upgraded. So again, the difference here is 146% increase in add to carts. We've got an interesting question. Um, Andrew, have you guys seen an increase in conversions when you add security icons and text to the conversion pages? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, we've isolated those instances and in some cases it can make a great difference. I remember one particular test um, with a company that really high anxiety customer group, mm -hmm. right? They're like burying their product in the backyard. That's how I high anxiety, I can't go into more. And so we had a satisfaction guarantee at the right place in the checkout process where we replaced the terms and conditions. And just adding that satisfaction guarantee, um, I think it, it brought them, uh, what was it, five million or something in, in additional profit or revenue. It was a significant number. It's not a bad number, I'd like to have that. Oh, me too, right? So to answer your question, yes. Um, now, which ones? Everybody asked me, well, which better? Is Verisign better or is this? Honestly, uh, we haven't, I haven't seen anybody have the budget to test that particular question, but I'm sure VeriSign has. <laughs> They're very interested in that. Yeah. So um, just go check with them. <laughs> but it does, you're right. And why is that? Well, that has to deal with anxiety, and we touch with that in the index. Maybe we'll do another clinic on anxiety. So let's wrap it up real quick. There's a checklist for you guys. I want to go through at least one live op with you. We're almost out of time. But you can download the slides. You can grab a checklist and um, you can use it. Now again, I don't want you to use this as a rule check off box. I want you to use this as a way to open your mind up a little bit. Think like the customer, that's all. Mm -hmm. I promise you, if you think like the customer and you think like a different customer for every the different pages, you're gonna get a different page every time, maybe slightly. Because again, it's about the conversation, not the image, not the page, not the pixels. Before we go into live up really quick, if you guys like this, um, you'd like to learn more about the conversion index, we do teach a whole thing on it, a whole course. It's really cool. Um, I started off with this and I'm still using it to this day as a great strategic guide to help me and my thinking. I know Taylor, the team uses it. So if you're interested in using um, what we use or figuring out what we use, uh, please, you can go here and, and check it out. Let's get to your pages now. I wanna do at least two, okay? And then we'll, we'll stop. I know we're out of time. But let's do at least two and then we'll run. So if you've got to run, thank you so much, but let's quickly go through one. We've got America's Best Value in The background, their uh, reward and loyalty program for participating hotels and their goal is to increase subscriptions, probably through that form field. So what would you do differently? I'm gonna ask Taylor really quick. Taylor, top thing or two, what would you, what would you want to test differently on this page, uh, especially if it, as it pertains to difficulty and length? All right, great. So <clears throat> I got the team scrolling down the page and I see a rotating banner. Now, if I were to get uh, into the top two things I would probably want to test, one of the things that we've talked about today is the friction, the friction in the form. Are you actually using all the information you're getting there? Right. Is it all valuable information to you, for you to store about your members? Right. If not, consider cutting some. Or if it is, one thing you might want to do is consider breaking it up into that two-step form process. Yes. So collect what you need on the front end um, to kind of generate that lead and then on the back end say, what other information can we get to actually help you and give you better discounts that will apply to your interest? And that way you kind of break it up, you increase your volume and you'll also hopefully increase quantity. Um, now the second thing I would probably want to test here would just be exactly how is the value displayed or how do we boost appeal to get right. people into this membership program? So, Maybe some more of these logos that are in the right the column over here, getting them more involved in the direct eye path and saying right. these are the specific savings that people are getting and let's boost that appeal and increase the velocity for the lead getting created. Right. I mean, if you scroll up on the page, guys, what if you just changed the headline, got rid of that rotating banner and said get free room upgrades, late checkout, and 15% off on future stays. Mm -hmm. Fill out the form. And, you know, there's an interesting question. Well, wait a minute. I, 
I thought that that breaking it up into two steps was bad, John. You just showed me an example. Mm -hmm. Well, that's the question. What would you do if you only had to fill out one form field and then you had 20 more to fill out? Or what would you do if you had five and then maybe four more to fill out? Yeah. There's a difference. Can you feel the difference when you think about it? Now, I'm sure you could very well break that up. Right, And you could even capture their name and their information and say, hey, listen, we saw that you're interested. Would you like to join? But uh, yeah, so I don't want you to think rules here. Again, think about the customer. What is going to feel right to them? Yeah, what's going to feel right? What's going to feel uh, necessary? Okay, And then what's unnecessary, throw it out. But yeah, get rid of that banner and put a headline there in its place. I promise you, you're going to see a significant difference just in that change alone. All right, let's do one more. I think we're out of time. But um, let's just do one final one, national text debt. Taylor, take it away. Okay, great. So I'm looking at this page now, and it looks like it's for reducing or eliminating IRS back taxes fast. So you got a little bit more of a complex sale here, which is probably why you're trying to generate a lead in this case. Um, one of the things that I'm noticing on this page by looking at it, there's something I like here. You actually have the arrow directing the iPath to the form along with some of those benefits in the left column. But the one thing I'm not noticing is, is how do these benefits directly correlate to the free IRS tax consultation? So selling the benefits of the consultation itself might be an approach worth testing right. versus just saying, hey, here's the benefits of settling your IRS tax taxes. Right. Uh, so it's kind of more of that uh, process level value for what they're offering right now versus the entire value prop of just getting rid of your back taxes. So that's really good, guys. That's really good. Because anybody see that little line under the last bullet point? We will contact the IRS in less than 24 hours on your behalf. I don't know about you, but if the IRS is calling me, that's probably when I'm going to start looking for web pages. Mm -hmm. Don't worry, IRS. I'm all right. I pay my taxes. <laughs> but if you're in that situation when you need to reduce or eliminate your back taxes fast, you're probably panicking. And you're probably looking for a quick solution that you can call right away. I promise you, if you can help them know that you're going to act fast, you put that in the primary iPath, you're probably going to see a different response, probably a greater response. Yeah, exactly. And if you have a testimonial, I think there's one on the page somewhere when I saw it come up in full screen. But if you have a way to say, okay, you can reduce your tax debt by X percent or X amount using our services, that's powerful. That's dollars you're saving in your pocket. Right. So use that to boost appeal throughout the yeah. process. So get this, save dollars, and <laughs> we're going to call them in less than 24 hours, and you're actually going to save money. Why not? Why wouldn't I want to at least get in touch with you to see if it's for real. Sounds good to right. me. So, excellent. Everybody, thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your trust. And thank you for bearing with us for this extra two or three minutes. We look forward to having you for another clinic. So please come back. I want to see a more yeses next time, if, um, or Austin as well. And if you're interested in doing some of the research with us to kind of showcasing your work up here, then let us know. Uh, just select the research partnership opportunity in the post-webinar survey. Um, but otherwise, let us know how we did. Let us know what you'd like us to test. And let us know what you'd like us to cover. Thank you, everyone. We look forward to seeing you next time.